one. For my story this week, I went with Say You by Sarah Collins. And the way I went about choosing this story is I looked at the list of authors. I didn't recognize any of them right away. I decided that I wanted to go with a female writer. And I saw that Sarah Collins had two stories included in the collection. So I figured she must be pretty good. And I decided to go with her first story, which is Say You. The craft element that I want to discuss in this story is point of view or distance. This story has a pretty unique point of view. It's written in first person plural, so from the perspective of we instead of the perspective of I. And I can't recall any other stories that I've read that have had first person plural. I may have read them before, but um, it hasn't stuck with me. And it really stuck out to me in this story. So the story is about this group of young women who live on an island between Cuba and the United States, and everything about them kind of shows that they're in between two things. So literally where they live is between the U.S. and Cuba, and um, these men from Cuba show up to their island and are there for a while, and the women are kind of infatuated with these men. Um, and it talks about them wanting, the women wanting to be American. They uh, they read Cosmo magazine and they listen to American music. Um, and I, I think that they speak English. But then these men come along and they want to try to speak Spanish with them, but they don't. And there's just a lot that kind of um, shows that these women are kind of stuck between almost two identities, it seems. Um, but the first person first person plural narrator really goes to show that these women really have kind of a hive mentality and it does stay first person plural throughout the story. I kind of thought that maybe it would transition into an individual narrator, but it never did. Um, and the review by Le Guin, and sorry if I'm mispronouncing her name, that I decided to read was her review of Eligible by Cur Curtis Sittenfeld which is a book that I've read, and Curtis Sittenfeld is an author that I enjoy. Um, it's a modern-day telling of Pride and Prejudice, and I picked this not just because I like the author and I liked the book myself, but it's written about, if you've read Pride and Prejudice, you know it's about this family that um, is a big group of girls, so I thought maybe there would be some sort of connection that I could draw between the two. And Le Guin really focuses on um, a critique that Sittenfeld kind of doesn't differentiate between the girls, the sisters enough. She doesn't give them enough of their own personality, and they all kind of blur together. This was a critique from her, and I think it could kind of apply to Sarah Collins' story, but I think that that's what Sarah Collins was going for in her story, to show that these women have this group mentality and really aren't distinguishable from one another, at least in the story um, written from the first person plural. And how I would like to use the same element, um, I think that point of view is something I've thought about a lot lately because I struggle with deciding what point of view I want to write my stories in and I feel like I'm often torn between first person singular and third person. Um, I think third person is good for kind of encompassing a lot of different characters and first person singular is good for getting a really close look on that of that narrator but kind of a limited look of other characters or a biased look and I haven't really thought about experimenting with point of view like third person plural I would say is pretty experimental but I think maybe as I think about this I should keep in mind that there are other points of view than just first person singular or third person, even though those seem to be the most common, and that it might actually uh, benefit my story to do something a little bit experimental. So thank you for listening to my post. Everyone have a great week.